Hello. The following is a recording of the play The Rapture by James Sherry and Mark Wallace. I'm Lonely Christopher of Interpoets Theatre, which produced this show with Artist Space. Interpoets Theatre was proud to present The Rapture as our inaugural production. The cast list with full bios and more information, including the script, is available on our website, www.interpoetstheatre.com. What you will be witnessing is a dramatic reading of the play that occurred on December 6th, 2020. The cast was sequestered in various locales around the country due to the coronavirus pandemic. The Rapture is a verse drama in four acts and a brief epilogue with 23 characters portrayed here in this iteration by six actors. The script was composed in the tradition of medieval mystery, miracle, or morality plays, often depicting biblical tales where the characters embody various straightforward concepts related to a central ethical quandary. The political dialectic on display also suggests Brecht's didactic and allegorical dramas. In a way, this conceit does relate to the battle for the soul of the everyman, but the stakes are decidedly contemporary. The rapture outlines the ways operatives across the political spectrum monetize our desires and, perhaps especially, our disasters. This is a dramatization of the end times that we call late-stage capitalism. Our authors present us a menagerie of archetypes vying for control in a terminally ill society. It's a truly religious experience. Directed by James Sherry. Technical direction by Izzy Dow for Artist Space. Technical assistance and voiceover by Anastasios Karnizas. Graphic design by Ven Daniel. Starring Roland Sands, Thomas Fink, Clorinda McLeod, Anna Kohler, Stephen Ira, and Greer Sinclair. This is The Rapture by James Sherry and Mark Wallace. Please enjoy the show. Act One, Scene One. A CEO and minister discuss increased human population. Our new drug, Long Eva, is saving millions of lives. But our pseudo parlor division, I mean brethren, are having a bad year. And frankly, the Lord receives fewer funeral prayers. My intention is not to offend, but that drug of yours, sir, turn my flock into zombies. No, even drives more revenue than your losses. Even with a minuscule percentage of zombie side effect and a no double blind test proved that effect. The purpose of civilization is to keep people alive, healthy, and most of all, productive. Yes, I guess I mean, of course, but God's planet suffers under the weight of so many people. There are 50% more people on Earth than it can sustainably support. Are you talking about climate change that junk science? My sermon Sunday addresses available resources. We have limited arable land. Water supplies are dwindling. With this population, we'll use up potable water everywhere. Seas are rising and your firm wants to save millions more lives. God needs these souls. <laughs> Technology is the solution, preacher. We can go to Mars. Think of the prophets. There is another factor here. What's that? My prayers to heaven have been answered. God wishes increases in human mortality. He's got idle angels lolling about restless. He fears instability. The supply chain is underutilized. Angels not processing enough souls to gain their bonus level wings. In, in terms that you would use, sir, lower death rate means lower profits from earth and excess capacity in heaven. The soul supply needs a shock. God and Jesus think it's time for Jesus to, to come again. What? The rapture first, then the second coming. The Lord is my shepherd.
Act One, Scene Two. A mother and her daughter fight in the dining room. I'm home, Mom. No, <laughs> my major today. A finance degree, it is. About time someone around here made some money. If the world had more women running businesses, then businesses would be better. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Just a few weeks ago, we were talking about women's studies or environmental studies, fields where you can do some good work. That was a whole month ago. I got some good advice from my school counselor on where the action really is. Do you understand what you're saying, my darling? Don't you know what it means to work for a big corporation? Greedy people who make a living taking the money from hard, honest working folk. It's a pretty old fashioned way of looking at it, mom. Corporations do all sorts of environmental work. Wearing flowers in your hair is so 20th century. Hey, I was never a hippie. I was a punk. I had a nose ring. For two years, I even had a mohawk. Mm -hmm. Hippie, punk, whatever. I'm sure you looked very vintage, but I'm the one that has to pay back these loans. I said I was going to help you. <laughs> On your salary? I don't really believe that. And, and I don't want help that you can't afford. I certainly don't want dad's help either. If I never speak to him again, that's fine with me. The corporate world made your dad who he is, a man loyal to money and his pleasures. <laughs> and now you want to follow him in his footsteps? I'm not following in his footsteps or yours either. How do you know that it won't be corporations who end up saving the planet? They have all sorts of initiatives and it's possible to make good money and save the world. I don't want to argue. I actually have an actual big fight coming up. These Jesus freaks are really making my life miserable. Oh, don't they have a right to be whoever they want to be? Don't I have that right? They do and you do, but I think they are the ones who want us to be just like them. I'm happy to live and let live but I don't want to make a pilgrimage to Jesus a lago to genuflect to the corporate chills in the pool. Maybe there's something to this rapture. For me, for all of us, you've never even once taken me to church. Maybe I want more of a relationship with God. <laughs> Honey, please don't be naive. A lot of people start out with the best intentions and end up somewhere they never expected. Maybe I'll break the glass ceiling instead of standing around complaining about it. Things are different now, Mom. It's possible to work inside the system. Me and my friends are going to make the world the way we want it to be. We're not like you. We're not going to compromise. I thought you felt I was the one refusing to compromise. <laughs> Mom, you just don't get it, do you? Act 1, Scene 3. Traders build a derivative around the rapture. Can I make big bucks? How safe is my equity of this investment? How soon can I cash out? I need to know right now if I'm chosen. I, I mean, I, I need, I mean, I demand assurances. Investment in Jesus is never wasted. He pays off in this life and the next. Philippians 4.19 says, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Now he's here on earth. I'll help you speak to him directly. The moment he got here, he asked me to set him up with people who need him and who can help him. I've known him my whole life. So be assured, there's no Jesus like Jesus. You actually know him? Holy derivatives. I want a piece of that Jesus action. This action will be worthless if he gets himself crucified again. How do we know he's here for good and will guard our investments? My son, come with me this weekend to the new resort he just opened. Jesus a logo. Golfing, horseback riding, shooting people in the face the entire arc and a big pool where Jesus does most of his baptizing these days. Swim with Jesus and you have a clean start. Even the Germans are getting in the pool and when the Germans get wet, it's time for business. Plus quality women, 
Russian women, especially, are ready to go to heaven right away with a right kind of American trader. So, Downing Thomas, uh, how can I convert you? Jesus is the biggest investment option there is. You want in? There are others in the cabana, and you're welcome to stay out of the pool. But if you want in the swim, you better jump quick. Still, maybe you're the kind of believer better suited to the small, safe margin of U.S. treasuries and renovation art projects in Kansas City, Kansas. Now, hold on there, buddy boy. I'm not saying no. I just want to know the mechanics of this little instrument. I'll buy it. But I need some transparency. Into the pool. Let Jesus dab a little water on your forehead, and the heart of everything will be revealed. If the tree of knowledge doesn't reassure you, then perhaps your own judgment can't be trusted. Don't, Baker. I can suit you both. Let's write this investment as a credit default swap and ensure your bonds against potential loss. We'll sell these swaps to the new governments of Tulsa of Greater Russia. <laughs> Those guys will buy anything. Let's see. The CEO buys debt in rapture bonds, say 20 billion, huh? We'll eliminate possible loss from default by the issuer of the bonds, that is Jesus, by selling the credit to Tulsa. That is Tulsa acts as a collateral to ensure the investor's potential losses as part of the agreement. I fear counterparty risk, but since the minister is sure we'll all be rising up, that'll be no problem. No, that makes sense. In Jesus, you will be protected from all loss. Indeed, all losses shall be turned into gains. Jesus insured Moses' investments. <laughs> Just sign here, minister, and here. Act one, scene four. Corporate leaders sell Tulsa to Russia. Jesus says go, sell what you have. Gentlemen, we folks weren't managing our people and property effectively here in Tulsa. Tax income was down 20%, home foreclosures up eight, crime up 10. Democrats want social programs, too expensive. Republicans lowered taxes on the upper brackets and retail sales fell. But this new opportunity will make our town roar we should have leased you Tulsa years ago. Tulsa needs a streamlined economy. Cities can't be responsible for too many poor citizens. And the government, Tulsa, consistently operates at a loss. Now, today's U.S. Russia pilot program leases cities for 99 years to our northeastern neighbors. <laughs> Now, you Russians know how to manage populations. And I'm sure you can reform the city without all those nasty human rights that makes US cities so expensive. Mr. Mayor, or should I call you Grand Duke of the Greater Tulsa of Russia? I'm so happy you found a vehicle to fit your new title. I'm sure you'll help us run this city, assuring all Tulsa citizens have and know their place. We hear the work camps are up and running and now unemployment is practically zero. We here in Tulsa are ready for the new trends. Half corporate state, half work camp. I'm sure we'll be squeezing the best from everyone. Mr. Mayor, of course. Even the poorest citizens will have clear roles with Tulsa in our hands. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the work camps are full. We need more farmers to feed the workers. Farmers? Yeah. Here in Oklahoma, we plowed them under in the Dust Bowl. I hear some big farmers are going to the big Jesus rally this weekend down at Jesus Alago. Maybe we can talk to them there? Yeah, big bash I hear, but I also hear there's going to be a protest. 
Jesus saves us from worker complaints, poor people, and most activists. As long as he leaves those lovely loopholes in his morality, we can deal with a few meddlesome lefties. <laughs> uh, a few, a few protesters reassure me that I'm doing my job. Act 1, Scene 5. Labor discusses Jesus. Jesus, it's cold. My fingers are chapped. On the assembly line, 25 years. What crap. My job handed to some Mexican guy who needs it as much as I do, but gets paid nada. He's just doing what he has to. Why be mad at him? I've been smashed to the concrete by corporate rules and rulers. No need to fight the union if you can just close the plant. Five days a week, all I do is nap on the floor of job application room 666. I needed time with my family to finish my degree. I can't work 40 hours in an office, which was really 50 by the time I got home. But contract work's a constant gamble and the odds are high I'll be unemployed soon. Now and then a champagne and steak, but mostly canned spaghetti and lead-filled tap water. And with my husband on deployment and my oldest headed to high school, something's got to change. If you both agree, then here's the price. Let's organize. I'm a worker too, even if I'm paid with the security of marriage. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. The last thing I need is an organizing job that doesn't pay. I'm glad to protest as long as it's convenient and doesn't cut off traffic. I ran into one of those on the freeway protest and I was three hours late for the job. As long as it involves busting shit up, I'm in. The system kicked me hard and I'm ready to kick it back. If we only identify I as free, then we lose humanity's greatest species gift, cooperation. You know, right now the CEOs and investors are huddled in a room planning to smash us in even more ways we don't see coming. It's not a conspiracy. They'll all want to drive down wages and they do it together by making us focus on the freedom of individuals why is up, guys? Individual freedom, that's the big con. Cooperation is the key to a fair say in how we live, whether it's me with my arm in the toilet or you in front of the blasting furnace. I'm listening, and it's worth a try. I just hope cooperation comes with a better paycheck and better conditions for working parents. I'm in too. It seems like lots of work, but work is what I know. What do we do? Well, here's the news, folks. It takes more than people being willing to get together, share information, and cooperate. There are trade-offs, tough decisions, and months and months of negotiations. Your corporate resistance plan sounds just like my corporate plan. If I don't see some worthwhile change, and soon, I'll be flying solo. What do we got to lose? Act 1, Scene 6. Politicos discuss what they want from Jesus. Uh, I sent out the best people down to Florida to talk to this Jesus guy, but it's not clear whose side he's on. He's not a nonpartisan. He's an all-partisan, all right, but a partisan appears of himself. As DNC chairman, I tell you, Jesus is right now, and we need him. The question is still how to make him ours. I can play it Boku ways, but I need to know where he stands. I've got people working with possible slogans. Uh, Jesus, the Democrats, and you. Uh, Jesus is voting for us. Are you voting for him? We've got to be sure he'll sign on. We want a middle of the road, Jesus. I don't rock the boat, Jesus. A physically responsible Jesus. And one who appears open and unprejudiced. A rainbow, a pro-mediocrity Jesus, who still believes 
in individual responsibility and opportunity for those who will take what jobs there are. And if he comes in too far left, we're in trouble. If we call him an extremist, you'll take some voters with him. Maybe a lot. What can we offer that will move him to drop the crucifixion fantasies and help make the system a little more nicer for grateful users? Oh, 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 oh. We'll, ha we'll have cabinet positions, interior or health and human services. Oh, maybe, maybe even governor, say, of Florida. But he said more than once that he's not interested in worldly things. We're not talking about worldly things. We're talking about government. We're talking about principles. Somebody needs to get down there to Jesus or local and drag out of this Jesus what he wants. I'll catch a plane later today. What does Jesus want? No, that's a slogan I can work with. Act one. Scene 7. The news shapes the public view of the rapture. Welcome to our program. We have gathered with us today several highly esteemed experts on the subject of the alleged Jesus who has been stirring up people from his hidden fortress at Jesus, a logo. Welcome, everybody. Here's the question of the day. Is this so-called Jesus a good thing for America? we ask our blue ribbon panel of corporate leaders and government spokesmen. Nearly two thirds of Americans have made a personal commitment to Jesus. They believe they're going to heaven because they confessed their sins and accepted Jesus Christ as their savior. So it's crucial to get a better sense of what politically Jesus stands for. But Jesus is a real man. I've seen him who calls himself Jesus and he says, He's here to call the righteous upward. Revelation says, rise and measure the temple of God. My homeland security contacts tell me they vetted this man carefully, looked into his resources, and asked him hard questions. They can find no guilt in him. He thinks everything he does is perfect. Democrats have been very clear. They are very happy to work with this Jesus. They want religion to represent equal opportunity under the law. They think Jesus stands behind that. But which Jesus is this Jesus going to be? Is he the Jesus that raises the poor and the meek or the Jesus of limos? Well, Jesus says we have to change the way we think and to think about him. He seems to have a message for everyone. The advertiser, Jesus says, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. To the CEO, he quotes the second commandment, there are no other gods before me. To the journalist, the Gospel of John says, I write this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know you have eternal life. There is no God but God. Oops. Damn that teleprompter. Okay, only the faithful will rise up. Think about it, panel. I'll say it again. The Democrats like Jesus and would love to work with him, but they also like Jews, Muslims, Buddhists, and many other reputable world religions that make our country great. What does this Jesus have to say to women as well as men? Where does this Jesus stand on people with non-binary identities? Oh, you all make sense and you all disagree. Jesus can reconcile these differences. His point of view is transcendent. He wants us to come together in him, hmm? to find the way, the freedom, the light in most individual identity he shapes for you. Jesus wants all of you to want what he wants, to find yourself in him. Excuse me, but I, I really unfortunately, have to. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we're out of time. Thank you all for being here. I'm sure we're all excited to see what Jesus will do in our wonderful country. Good night. Act one, scene eight. In the pool at Jesus a logo. Why aren't the uh, 
the, the EU CEOs in, in the water. Germans can be outlasted as often has been proved. They're always on time, but they can't handle space. There are some pretty shady elements here. Who invited Democrats? Jesus is open for negotiations to all who are open to negotiations with him. Democrats bickering creates many options. Yeah, there are more bankrupt and failed candidates in hell than successful CEOs in heaven. <laughs> everyone is getting too chummy. Maybe it's about time for Jesus to show everyone a few big boss miracles. Jesus will not be forced by anyone to show his power. Still, as an act of goodwill towards your guests, he's willing to raise a few dead. Oh, how many? Oh, not many. In fact, not even as many as the population of Nevada. Act two, scene one. Heaven's view of humanity and the goals of finance. What must I do to please God? To please you? I want to ascend, not go to hell. I, I'm afraid that my immortal soul, God judges the righteous. And God is angry every day. Fear God. He has given you free will. So you can make a fool of yourself on social media whenever you desire. But you are subject to error and therefore imperfect. How am I imperfect? I want to be perfect. Imperfection puts me at risk. You think you act alone and are separate from the rest of the world. Fool, you are not. All of God's children got links to every other changing thing. How can there be no stable position? Am I not me? I'm identified on the Facebook as I wish to be. This slow theatrical can't match the speed of moral judgments on Twitter that energize and anger consumers. You're you, but vary with every role. From Twitter to Instagram, you are never the same person twice. Do you see God in the same way when signing a deal as when putting your children to bed? You're imperfect. You change to a different imperfection. Your links complete you, but they also put you at risk. You reach out to love Jesus, to love God, but your love always falls short of the perfect love of the Trinity. You are only human in your imperfection. For example, what is the color white? Schools teach us white combines all the colors of the spectrum. Yet you see white as a colorless luminescent and therefore differently from what you know. True purity arrives from diversity. Why has God made me imperfect? He cannot make you perfect like him. Only together can humanity embrace all of his qualities. Only God who is everywhere can be perfect. He doesn't want that kind of competition. Ah, ah, gotcha. <laughs> Michael just confessed God's weakness in competition with humanity. Now, my CDs on the rapture doubled since we started this conversation. <laughs> the angel is fucked up and we're going to give CD a run for his money, give God a run for his money. I have returned to bring salvation and the light of wisdom to the human race. The rapture. But all these changes threatened my assets. I'm rapturous about improving my position on this planet. My son starts harping in the fall. <laughs> Maybe this angel needs some education, too. Act two, scene two. 
The army reports on the impending battle. General, our army gathers near Las Vegas. Temperature 112, morale high. We build these weapons to keep money churning, and that's why if you make a bunch of bombs, you've got to use them. Sir, begging your pardon. Reconnaissance reports. Two million undead fighters armed with crosses and AR-15s moving toward our position. Sir, somebody's training these zombies, sir, to chant something unintelligible. Male state or mate great, I'm not sure which, and we're not sure who's doing the training. Politicians, corporations, the media? What is this army of the undead? You heard of the Raptor Project? Yes, sir. That is it. Not very pretty, sir. No, Sergeant, it isn't. Uh, what are we going to do about it, sir? We're going to blow these fucking zombies into the ground they came from. Damn the consequences. Uh, sir? We're U.S. military. We don't handle our power, even to Jesus. If he has something to say, he should come out here and talk to me. Not knowing what's going on makes me nervous. And when I get nervous, I reach for the military. Uh, oh, sir, we decoded communication from pockets of living people resisting the undead menace. And uh, I'm afraid to say many Democrats, even fringe leftists, a group called Burning Man, they're all fighting valiantly. Uh, maybe the Democrats, not so much. We can't just bomb them, sir. Right, 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 right. We just can't bomb them. We've got to keep a moral compass and room for plausible denial. Send some drones to bomb the undead. A few comments as you know, collateral damage. It will keep it will keep our moral positions intact. Mm-hmm. Sir. The undead army is sending a signal. They say Jesus has told them he's willing to negotiate. Collect your staffs. Set a meeting with Jesus and his priests. We will attend with those who can show their skin in the game. Yes, sir. Act two, scene three, a zombie congregation. What a relief, I feel great. Again? Have we been raised from the dead? Again? I'm getting sick of being raised from the dead. We're shifted from death to insignificance and inarticulate. That's a bad attitude. I'm a zombie. What kind of attitude do you expect from a useless cog of rotting flesh? Should I pretend that exercise and diet will keep me alive forever? A little, hey, it's nice to see you, wouldn't hurt. It's not nice to see you. You look like dirt. I don't even want to know what I look like. Who raised us from the dead this time? Jesus, of course. I knew it was Jesus, you dickless, decaying zombie. It's always Jesus. I mean, which Jesus this time? The Statue of Liberty, give me your tired, your poor Jesus, or the good old gun-toting, ass-kicking Jesus? I'm pretty sure this Jesus is one kind of Jesus, the American Jesus, ready for barbecue and beer. I'm pretty sure even you would have voted for this Jesus. I don't like any Jesus at all, but as long as it's no holier than thou art rainbow coalition Jesus, no urban fancy slick boy Jesus, I guess I'll do what I'm asked. I want a job I can do and someone who believes in America. It's simple for me. Otherwise, the whole country will be stormed by people from who knows where. Hey boys, what's happening? I just took my long jiva and when I woke up, whammo. <laughs> no logic I can trust, only emotions of bad breath. I'm <laughs> sorry. It looks like it's time to slurp up some lip dard brains instead of listening to them whine about snowflakes and unicorns. I really miss the good old days. 
when taking out desperate poor people in muddy holes to fatten the American banking system. The American banking system went overseas and left me with nothing. How do you think I got dead in the first place? Why, when Jesus asks for zombies, does he give us these shit for brains leaders who line their own pockets? Guess what's that's what I deserve for working 20 years in the AM PM in Kingston, Arizona. We got a duty here, all right. I, I sure do love when I have a duty, something to do with friends I trust. So are we working together on this and going to turn on each other like a bunch of uh, university communists? I already said I was in. What do you want me to do? Like it that I'm the guy that Jesus uses to clean up his messes? It's like the old days when men were men I could adore. Now I'm a zombie with a mission. Brains must eat brains. Brains must eat brains. Act two, scene four. Jesus's undead army and US Army Command negotiate. General, General, our undead are not your enemy. They just want a seat at the table. They're tired of being stepped on. I don't see any reason for anybody to, well, uh, arm. Fuck you. Oh, don't you stoop to insults. We're not commies. Treat us like you think de decent Americans ought to be treated. This is the greatest country in the world. Think about the technology that you can put to work in the next 10 years, the opportunity for an award if we all work hard and take advantage of freedom. But this conflict puts us all at risk. The living, I might mention more than the undead. We're still in charge here. So our best tactic is to keep different groups hating each other, but stop them from fighting. Feed them to eat. Yeah, only the US military does the fighting. Exactly my point, sir. Oh, the backlash is here and conflict destroys our shared space. What if I say what I want, then you say what you want, then we can figure out uh, how to both have most of it. Freedom, freedom from you. <laughs> we want people free to choose the full array of product options to make them comfortable, resilient, and to have many ways of getting into debt. We want our people to decide their own fate with faith in Jesus and consistent with traditional values. Our citizens want freedom of choice and freedom to dominate. They're worried that people outside the US are trying to take their profits. They want freedom of speech in the corporate sector and the public sector and no restrictions on corporate earnings. Ah, we have some common ground to lie in. We want family values, the freedom to limit behavior that, that doesn't fit community values. You want freedom of behavior. That's just consumerism, but corporate earnings, that sounds good to us. If I adopted your negotiating style, we're going to war. Did somebody say war? Boy, howdy. Mmm, uh, good, good. Almost forgot, I have a field memo for you, sir. Thank you, son. Oh, apparently you are already moving. You're already moving your zombies into forward positions. Oh, 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 let's try a test agreement. You keep your soldiers in position and we'll hold our, ours just where they are. Let us keep our position, positions for 72 hours and see if we can find more common ground out of this simple agreement. Agreed. But this tub right here is the sun by the button. If any undead gets sneaky, I'll blow you all into the bright Nevada sunshine. My guess is your corpses won't do much complaining in Washington. Act two, scene five. People who prefer to live without fighting. Comrades, zombies and the military are fighting across the radioactive field of what used to be Nevada. 
nature is beginning to come apart. Now it's time for direct action. We can take our country back and install humane values for people who believe in working with others to make a better world. Let's start by making the basics ourselves and bypassing the industries. We can make clothing in homes, lumber at local sawmills, and gardens for food in every yard. Many people in my neighborhood have been doing this sort of thing already. We have more than 10,000 households ready to supply our region. Several teams from the army have uh, deserted to our side. Regions are working together all over the central states and doing what we're doing, rebuilding the country one firm step at a time. The questions are, how do we coordinate different constituencies with different interests while leaving them free to make personal and local decisions? How do we get them to act together for key objectives without some coordinated leadership? All for one and one for all isn't as easy as it seems. What goals do we all have in common? We all want our basic needs guaranteed and a way and a say in the decisions that affect us to speak for ourselves and be represented honestly. And none of us want anyone interfering in our lives. We want to be as free as possible, to live as we like, to play music, invent our own technology, and go out on the water in boats. Security for our needs, a say in our lives, and freedom to be who we want. Like my daughter always tells me, all labor, even my sweeping, should be honored by proper pay, both love and wages. And I think we found the right combination. Unless the Democratic Party co-ops it for its donors. Can we reach our friends in the cities and get everyone out of their houses and marching? I think we can. Log on to Twitter. If anything will get people moving, it's their fears of imminent zombie invasion. I wonder what my daughter would think of this platform. Act three, scene one. On Earth, the non-elect realize that the situation has changed. Well, let me get this straight. You're telling me our main competitors, the entire GOP, has all gone to heaven? Uh, going right now? Hey, look! Those slow upward moving blobs, that is exactly UFOs. I received uh, insider, insider info regarding the big trade and I rushed right over to tell you. Well, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Are they out of the game or playing it on a whole new level? I refuse to acknowledge that it's happening at all. <laughs> that would be throwing my whole career in news reporting into a fundamentalist trash can. I always wanted to send the boys club packing, but even I never thought they'd just float right off the planet in that high self-regard they have for their own hot air. I feel left out. I support both Democrats and Republicans. What's so wrong with that? I'm every bit as corporate as any of the GOPs rising up right now to meet God in heaven. So what if I throw a few scraps to citizens so they watch my show? If she is full of people claiming to have religious experiences when they're really just stoned. Did any of you spike the punch? I had enough youth to know when I'm tripping. Theologians, they don't know nothing about my soul, about my soul. You can sit, sit around and bemoan your lost resource options as much as you want. I'm going over to Capitol Hill to put women in open congressional seats. Is there a middle ground here? Now, I don't want to go to heaven, and I sure don't want to go to hell. I just want to see more stables to built on giving more speakers the right to be consulted on decisions that matter. Forget about the metaphors of idealism, aiming for what hasn't happened yet. Forget about the metaphors of heaven and hell. Is that too much to ask? Uh, maybe there are still a few tickets for late leaving flights. Who's handling blob transportation? Why is the American airline system in such disarray? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, okay. Turns out there's a, oh, sorry. There's a special lane for people with the right, uh, go straight to heaven, do not pass go card. 
if I'm lucky, there'll be a black market for them soon. Act three, scene two. In heaven, a lobbyist corrupts the angel Raphael. You believers caught up in the rapture may be in pain and suffer greatly. I hereby make you whole, pure, and free of doubt. Uh, uh, oh, thanks. Suddenly I'm less hungry. What can we do now that we are whole, cured, and doubtless? Praise God. I give you zombies voices. We praised God on earth. We're the patriarchal support group, even the zombie women. Rah, rah, what's new up here? New zombies were already sanctified on earth by devouring human brains. We appreciate your devotion to pure desire. Now in heaven, the truth of your support manifests love, love of God, the only God. Uh. We're addicted to hate of humanity, especially if they're not white and love of malls. I mean, God, uh, we're we suffered making the transition from hatred to love. We loved our rage. Our people have voted. Although we are the elect, we'd like to go back to Earth where we can hate and kill to our heart's content. You are here to praise God. There is no right of return to your earth. The next seven years will be pretty ugly down there. After the rapture brought you here, the next era on earth, ecological disaster, crop failures, political upheaval, will not be friendly even to zombies. Yes, my Lord, Michael, please lead us. We don't believe in reason or that slippery sidebar wisdom, only faith and rage. Michael gathers with his sharp scythe the clusters of the vine of the earth, for its grapes are ripe. He has thrown them into God's wine press. Only genetically modified crops can grow in this new climate on earth. We are assured of profits forever. As a healer, I justify and cope. I've learned how to care. To dress these zombies' meats through my office. Does that sound like a good partnership? I'd love to get to know your organization, Raph. Let's do lunch. Mm? On earth or in heaven, people are given what they've earned. When you are ready to accept that, I'm sure Raphael can set up a lunch with the necessary parties for achieving everyone's just desserts. He's not only competitive in good works, but rationalizes bad decisions that make himself feel as good as he makes patients. Getting what we've earned, that's what I've been talking about all along. Not freeloading, not communism. Bring on the desserts, bring on the earnings. My team and I are ready to make it happen at whatever time and place you name. Don't fret about Michael. He's always such a dreary fellow, shedding blood and shouting. Why don't we three have a chat away from all this hullabaloo? I'm sure you all are feeling just fine. This sounds a lot like the earthly plane. Oh, humanity is merely a reflection of God. On earth, you cooperate to acquire your desires, but in heaven, they are realized fully. Here, on your right, is the river of the water of life as clear as crystal. It flows from the throne of God and the Lamb. Whether in the city or the grandeur of nature, the tree of life is visible in everything, in the network of bounty of living. It produces 12 kinds of fruit, each month having its own fruit. Which fruit would you like? Which desire would you fulfill? Why not jump right in with January? Fulfilling your desires improves your well-being. There are souls who want to rise to heaven who do not belong there. They come from unclean places, and their presence makes me suffer. Let's block them at the pearly gates. Do not fret, but relax and let us rule. What would you give for this chance to keep heaven pure? What are you three talking about? You know I have pretty good hearing. 
Heaven is not about your desire, but praising God for his wholeness. I'm trying to help them understand God's will as their own. That's good. I thought you might be hatching something shady. That lobbyist hasn't stopped confusing things since she got here. The political bedfellows we're sleeping with here don't seem so savory. But perhaps there's some game here. We who minister to the sick desire, yes, desire, improvement for all, ourselves included. Act three, scene three. A student and a CEO categorize souls in heaven. Okay, how do we label these files? Uh, what are the categories of goodness? How do we include people who find no place to thrive? I asked you here to help here because you seem to, well, reasonable. But now I'm not sure. What do, you, what do you mean long term? What's a, what's a student doing in heaven anyway? Of all the students on earth, Jesus chose me. I always speak in the voice of God, who is natural and make a place for concern for those who cannot find their home. Uh, a lot of us will end up here. <laughs> no wonder you're in heaven and always, and always still doing temp jobs. <laughs> These days in heaven, even temp work is rare. People of all kinds will arrive in seven years after the rapture, even those who didn't get invited to the parties. Just get the job done. Your short-term view is ignores humanity's need for sustainability. I'm here to sing the praises of the poor and meek. I will not serve your desires with lyred melodies or camouflage with beauty. Angels should want us secure and satisfied. Whose desires will you satisfy? And what is the moral of the story? You're afraid of the voices that search. I know despicable things about you. You want to cover them up so no one sees. I'm tired of your condescension. I'm tired of being sweet and kind. I know your dirty secrets. Don't think for a second that's easy to keep me quiet. Well, when you calm down, we can talk, but but consider what you have what you have to say. We will make heaven ours too. And the tide is already turning, and heaven has always been available for those who have the courage to seize it. Not every impulse produces intended results. Don't think I'm naive about my gut's intelligence. I eat your hate up like love. Stop for one minute. Why are you talking to him? I am the unstoppable one. I need logistics to bring our forces together in battle. What good are logistics to you? I speak the realities of his crimes and show them to you so you can act on your own behalf. But I need the right labels to show his true colors. I write and I wait as you do all that creepy stuff. My words portray his assaults on the state against humanity, against God himself. We maintain order in the present, not some future ideal that will never come to pass. We eat the brains of humans to bring them closer to God. What do you mean? Look where we are. Humanity's civilized wonders can't be expressed without careful speech and the chance for people to find their own bliss. Without that, it's just highways, cliches, and box stores. Yes, we here are raised to a higher plane by someone who doesn't exist alone. God's just a gathering of our parts performing his existence. This is a passion play where you put the pieces in order. Nonsense. I'm fighting you with every scrap of learning here and on earth. My dear, of course you are. But I am an officer, a warrior, 
fighting and tearing your flesh is how I learn from you the next step in my evolution. I pay attention to your acts and reconfigure them with my own life. If we allowed all your desires, the world would sink into torpor. I keep my desires stoked so that you'll feel alive. But then I need to know how you think differently than I. I study you to make you want what I have to give. My wretched labels, your, your poems, and your rants. They feed my supply chain to know, to know your thoughts. And if we allowed you all your desires and did not confront you to eat your brains, the world would sink into torpor. Understanding follows from more than violence. Knowledge speaks of more than pain. No, I, I'm not against potential. And these zombies aren't heels, though they like it better if it comes with burger and fries. I might be just the guy you need to get the seven up and running in a way that makes sense for you both. I'm in if it comes with fries. Knowledge has room for fries, for gluten-free bread, and for people to be who they are. But how can I trust you? No, we don't need your services. We welcome the elect to heaven and decide who belongs there. You working on your own is a worse idea than working together. I'm joining you to keep an eye out. Act three, scene four. Jesus provides dispensations for devotees. I'm glad to see the true followers are with me. Everything, Everything I do. I, I do, do it for you. Everything, Everything I do, I, I do it for you. I knew you would, and soon you'll know what you can do for me. But now let's discuss what I can do for you. Line up, folks. Get your hands out. What do you want? Ask for anything. <gasps> anything? Yes. Anything, anything, or just uh, anything? Uh, yes, uh, anything, uh, anything. I'd like a chain of mega churches in downtown Tulsa, Jackson, Charlotte, and Nashville. Your ministry is valuable to us in these final days. We need to support Raphael up here in heaven. But that can't be all. Anything, anything. Well, if you put it that way, I would like an unbeliever brought to me every day and a new sports car every day. And I want to drive that sports car right into that unbeliever. And I want it to be televised. And I want to get in no trouble at all. How about that? And maybe for variation, I want to gun some of them down right on Fifth Avenue while everyone cheers. It shall be so. And you? I want dessert every day for lunch and dinner. I want servants lined up at my door. I want the raiment of the Pope and I want no regrets. Your loyalty will be rewarded and no regrets, dear boy. And? And? Yes. <gasps> okay. I want to be a movie star. I want to do sex scenes, real ones. And I want a poster of me naked to be the most popular poster in America. And I want that poster in every bedroom in America. And I want women and men, lots of them, to see that poster when they're in a bedroom with a man. And I want them to wish and say they wish that I was there and that they feel disappointed that I'm not. And I want no one ever to ever remember Bird Reynolds or Lana Turner again. Too much? I knew it would be too much. Not at all. It's not too much. 
It's already done. You! We need to reorganize this place. Heaven has to write a pecking order. I will report directly to this big guy. I reckon you should include both Raphael and Michael, and of course, I support Raphael and his real according to your love of prophets or uh, prophecy. Anything, anything on earth. Well, you didn't say on earth. Are you moving into my territory? <laughs> Who do you think you are, Putin? I know Putin, and let me tell you, you are no Putin. I didn't say. I didn't say on Earth. I did say on Earth. Are you calling me a liar? I know you wouldn't. So anything on Earth, don't hold back. But I didn't hold back. It's okay. Everybody holds back. I want a piece of heaven, a big one. Anything short of that, no dice. It's done. How so? You're now 30% owner of Heaven Trademark Penning. 30% of proceeds from any business using the word Heaven in any aspect of what it does now belongs to you. That's not what I want. It is what you want. It is what you meant. So what? Nobody's got a song for Jesus? <laughs> Everything, Everything I do. I do it for you. For you. Everything, Everything I, I do. I do, I do it for hey, you. Hey, hey, hey. Look, I'm the biggest ever. I'm bigger than the biggest. But I like your style. Let's confer with some of these angels, see if we can bring you in on organizing heaven. What about, what about uh, attorney general? Attorney general of heaven? I take attorney general of heaven. I don't know if we can get that done. And what's in it for me? Maybe I want to be the attorney general or maybe just the secretary of heaven's interior. If I ask you to do it, you'll do it. Loyalty. That's what counts in heaven. So, how's everybody feeling? Everything I do, I do, I do for you. Everything I do, I do, I do it for you. And you should. I've done more for humanity than anyone. I'm like a smart person. I love people and I do everything for you and I do it really well. Look at all those paintings of me. Even as an infant, everybody loved me. My mother loved me so much. I was amazing. And I'm the, the most, I'm the most convincing speaker and, and I can deal with a bad situation really, really well. Everything, Everything I, I do, I do, I do it for you. Everything, Everything I, do, I, do, I do, I do it for you. Act three, scene five. Meanwhile, back on earth, this new Jesus wants to dumb down the language so he can control it. He enforces his will on us. Judge not that ye not be judged. How convenient. God does all the judging. What happened to free will? Okay, maybe that's not Jesus' job. Maybe that's God the Father's job. But I'm telling you, this free part deity wreaks havoc with my understanding of the importance of being human. Is humanity a multiple? I'm beginning to think our days as a species are numbered. If we want to stop that from happening, we'll have to act or we may end humanity's days. Post-human means there are no more people. We defeat our own cause to label like that. Decentering humanity linked to others in a single complex entity is not post-human, it's biocentric. But we can't just proclaim all one. Protecting the body remains a key to life and understanding. We've had the rapture. Now we predict seven really bad years, and then the world ends. 
How's that for numbered? We have to organize the people who are left on Earth and get them to focus on the homo sapiens. That homo again, it's not just about men. We definitely need a language not mired in male authority. The world will be better when everyone has equal say in what they get called. Odd, I sound like my daughter. That's not really surprising, given that, she, given that she's been working for the elect for weeks, several weeks now. I tried to talk her out of going up there, but she's so stubborn, like someone else I know. I should have guessed. She never listens to anybody. <laughs> I wonder what will happen when she discovers what they really like. She doesn't like being controlled, and she doesn't like using any words but her own. The moment she was old enough, she changed her own name. How things are controlled, and what they get named, and what we need to fight for. Fighting for language isn't enough. Fighting for material isn't enough. Language is material as the work of my hands. Act three, scene six. Channels of corruption in heaven. Oh, damn. And I got a deal for you. It's really a great deal. Possibly the greatest deal. Oh, you're channeling your boss, who, by the way, didn't deliver. I understand. We're here for eternity. True. And that's why this is such a great deal. I am delivering, and so will you. This is what you wanted, right, sir? An image of the lobbyist poster, naked with erection. It's renewable. I see you brought my suitcase. Yes, yes. She lifts it up. Your new wings. The minister knew your size and not easy to acquire. They'll help me convey my message. And the enemies of the people will be squashed. The people need support, fairness, and honesty. I think the deal is over. I'm going to drain the swamp. They can't help themselves. I'm trying to help the elect to be healed from the stresses of the rapture and the corruption of the unbelievers in power on earth. You've always had good intentions, Raphael, but I fear you've been corrupted by seeing only the pain of the elect here on earth. You, on the other hand, are another matter altogether. Uh, Michael, 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 we don't need more conflict. Drop the prop. The lobbyist is just playing his role, and you angels and even I don't really exist on our own. I'm just another player performing their role in this scene, an identity in your mind. Of course, my identity is a boundary condition. My existence is parts collected by language into a performance. Here we are on the stage. On one side, my power, on the other, my love. And on the third, nature absorbs us. I'm leader to some, oppressor to many, but I only exist in your point of view. The passion and negotiation of Jesus, the wisdom and fear born of the Holy Spirit and my own constructed self acting between. My, my Lord, Lord is many. Tell us what we what should do. do. I smell a rat. Act four. Scene one, Jesus made man. Yeah, yeah, I'm the greatest. I'm the biggest. There's never been any bigger. So how does it feel to serve me? I guess it's just about the best feeling in the world. Don't you think so? Why, yes. Yes, I do. That's you enough right there. You bastard. There's never enough me. I'm the biggest ever. I'm the greatest. There's no bigliest other than Jesus. Raphael, who let this guy play the Jesus role? He did it on his own and brought the whole US media along. They're fascinated with his lies. They always bring top ratings. <sighs> Didn't we have Hillary Clinton fitted for her Jesus robes last year? Weak candidate, no charisma, no passion. And it is a passion play after all. 
She had the numbers, but not the heart, an obvious scorn for people. No surprise there, I guess. Never scorn the pe people. It's tough these days getting good help. I'm gonna tell my lawyers on you, Dad. I'm not your dad. You may be part of me, but celestial surgery is just one of the innovations of the CEO's PharmaCorp. You and I are severed. If I read it right, your lawyers are in jail, your campaign managers too, and half your consultants, even a bunch of your Russian cronies are under indictment. You're not being fair to me. Who said you decide who gets to be Jesus? In heaven, I speak for the will of all. All. Who's this all? You yourself said your butt parts. My will's the will that counts. And my lawyers here in heaven are recounting this all thing. And you're getting to realize that without me, you're all ain't nada. <laughs> Give it your best shot, kid. Sounds to me like you have to learn the hard way. Till then, you're locked outside the wall of heaven's will. Wall? You're going to pay for this just like the Mexicans did. My lawyers everywhere. My lawyers are everywhere. Even if their dyed job drips, the more I sue, the more I cry hoax, the more I'm believed, the more I'm covered in the nightly news, the more support I gather, the more I am. It's a lot simpler than that, Jesus. I merely write you out of the script. When the news stops covering you, you simply cease to exist. Wish the press got that headline. Now, Get lost. Go live in your golf hole. Start your own network. This one's mine. <sighs> now let's really find a Jesus who can keep the whole machine tuned and oiled for proper production rates. I'm not looking for radical change here. No inflation, no deflation, modest growth to keep the values level. I want humanity predictable and under control. Give them ideals that keep them wanting, anxious, vague, and a little nauseated. We want eternal values of leadership here and on earth. So get down there, find a new player for this role of man, and let me see the program this time before you pull the trigger. Got it? Yes, Lord. Act four, scene two. On Earth, workers plan a demo. Now that those God-fearing folks have gone to heaven, we can build our world the way we want. We've got seven years of chaos before the final days. Unless we do something, we'll be in heaven with the elect, but they'll have taken the main positions and we'll be on the lowest rung again. Not all are equal in heaven. Equal in God's eyes, maybe, but after millennia of oppression, all people deserve, all people deserve a place at the table. Sounds like we need to act to break the business patterns that control us. But what's our alternative to just trying to assert centralized power whenever we deal with conflicts of interest? I don't think we can solve this problem on earth alone. Uh, what's the use in trying to create a people's heaven on earth if what the rapture is doing to the planet turns us all into zombies. Those Let pearly workers go visit heaven. Those pearly gates aren't open just to anyone. Heaven only takes people with the right credentials and God decides what those are. My guess is that God, like any boss, sometimes needs some persuading. Maybe he wants dollar bills, but maybe we give him an iron fist. Uh, there may be ways around Heaven's Gate or through it. Let's picket it. Does Heaven allow pickets? In theory, we're all employees, even the president. If we let Heaven's current system dictate our actions, then we're already finished. What are we sitting around for? Let's organize and get to the pearly gates. We'll smash them if we have to. Act four, scene three. God corrects the corruption caused by Jesus. 
Who do you think you are? I'm God. I don't believe in God. <laughs> don't I know it? What I mean is, God doesn't exist. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. God, I is a sum of natural numbers adding up to now. I is a projection. I is a concept all you uh, people use to promote your own ideas and gain authority from another, me. Then you complain about each other and claim that I'm the solution, but I'm just another player performing my role in this scene. My existence is parts of speech collected into dispute. On the father's side, my power, on the son's side, my love, and the holy ghosts, the constitution we're all within. I am leader to some, oppressor to many, but I'm only a composite, the passion negotiation of Jesus, the wisdom and fear engendered of the Holy Spirit, and my own constructed self-acting above. What about our dear? What about my piece of heaven? Piece of heaven? Piece of nothing, mister, I don't believe in God either. Didn't anybody ever warn you about overextending a position before you had the capital? You're bankrupt. And those assets you're hiding looks to me like somebody else has them. Even your golden parachute is lined with wet lead and you're crashing hard. But I'm gonna see that the new Jesus saves you. We'll bankroll your all losses and keep you solvent. Or is that apparently solvent? Well, thank you. Uh, okay, cut wages, increased sales prices, and a bad tax, and that we're moving into a new regime. What about my churches? What about my daily victim? Oh, they're there all right. You're wanted on three counts of embezzling church funds, five counts of hit and run, and countless counts of abuse. Not to worry, you've got a long period of enforced contemplation ahead to muse on your spiritual nature. Okay, 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 okay. Maybe we can still get a deal. I was never all in with this Jesus stuff, really. I just wanted an angle, you know, a way into the action. God's just a concept. <laughs> cool, I can work with that. Only please, please, please don't take down the posters of me. Oh, you're the poster girl, all right. Your face adorns post office walls. You're wanted for felony financial and publicity crimes. Welcome to America's Most Wanted, Mr. Insider. I don't understand how you did this since you didn't exist. Yeah, don't I know it. But that's the thing about me, Raphael, Michael, and all the other good folk up here making heaven work every day. We don't have to do anything to you. You do it all yourselves, extracting till society is hollowed out by the right, skimming the cream for their own profit. Yeah, but you can't take us all down, can you? There are more CEOs just like me on the way. And there are more men of God just like me on the way. And more deals just like mine, and deal makers just like me on the way. There are more movers and shakers and charlatans and liars than I dreamed of. And you can't stop us. The human desire to seize resources is endless. Why we brought you up here to save Earth, my creation from your rampage. That rapture was bait that Jesus didn't understand. Lord, humans are picketing the gate. What shall we do? <laughs> That's a neat trick. Uh, I guess we really do need a wall. A little heavenly fire should take care of them for now. Michael, see to it. Talk to Peter about reinforcements. These humans don't dictate to me. Yes, Lord. With Jesus locked out, heaven's out of balance. God oversteps his bounds. With Jesus gone as mediator, God fears that the people will not listen to him. Now we'll see past the autocrat of eons past. Humanity will not follow him, and neither, I think, shall I. Act four, scene four. The angels Raphael and Michael plan to overthrow God. I know I've made mistakes. Helping others is confusing, but you betrayed my deal. 
with our charming corporates. My new wings lost, I must cope with tattered pinions. I'm zealous and bloody, a purist, I admit it, but in this critical time, it doesn't serve for every small offense to cause rebuke. You protect the state of heaven against intruders and transgression. We honor you for that. But now with Jesus gone and too much power in too few hands, God seizes more power and sheds red blood in our blue white eerie. You'd blame God for your itchy palm? As much as I regret God taking it all into his hands, I cannot forget your acquiescence to the CEO and co-conspirators. I'm not the only player here. All those corporate shills that Jesus raised have turned God to a vengeful version of his former self, as if humanity were still a tribe of unschooled herders. Such rough behavior does not train our heavenly host to act the way we claim we like them. God's not much of a role model lately. Thank you for confirming my suspicion. Look, God's a fake. He admits as much. He's jealous and composed of our fragments. Let's get rid of him and let the workers into paradise. Are you sure they know what to do with power? Every time revolution wins, another set of oligarchs take over. The mass wreaks too much havoc on itself for de delicate decisions, even those you know are good. We can't do worse. The earth is about to implode. Toxicity and fire vent into the very air they breathe. Their skins are ashen and their eyes flood. We've got a big investment in it. Knowing what will happen, we let it happen anyway, to have our way, confirming, or should I say, pretending, that our will impels our purpose. I fear I may renounce my vows, and as a thing, I myself am suspect, as are you. That's the normal condition. Don't follow me if you think we only line our nest. But if you believe, based on history and faith, that when the system stinks, cutting rot away even to the bone allows the whole to retain its former glory, then we have to fight, and not only for ourselves. Okay, let's shake it up and let the chips land where they may because we know that once the riots, riots start, control flies from our hands. Well, what do we do when that CEO and lobbyist come storming in here, demanding their dessert? One problem at a time, okay? We've got to take on God directly and go on from there. I sure am ready to give God a piece of my mind. Act four, scene five. Humans take control after God disappears. Wow! Wow! We're inside the pearly gates. <laughs> that was easier than I thought. Those gates collapsed like my uncle in a pool hall on Friday. I'm torn. Are we, ask, are we asking God to accept our goals, or should we just act, act, and make heaven work our way? Welcome to heaven, Mom. Oh, I'm really glad to see you. I was starting to think I was on my own here. Oh, it's nice to see you, honey. You look very professional and pretty. <laughs> We're here to protest the way God has been handling the rapture. We want diverse voices in the language that we use and diverse hands to have equal access to reality's materials. I'm afraid you just missed God. Up in a puff of smoke when Michael and Raphael challenged his authority, God's like that, you know, vanishes when the going gets tough. The thing about God though, is that it doesn't matter whether or how God exists. What matters is what the rest of us do. He's gone just like that? after everything we've done for him? I wanted him to listen, take Raphael's medicine, not just flee. Concepts are like that. The whole system vanishes like the Unchained regime under pressure. Attachments define our heavenly collective. I'm not sure I can live without him. Women learned how to do that a long time ago. You might discover the power in yourself without relying on authority. But someone has to be in charge. Daily processes control our welfare. Why? Can't we all be in charge together? 
I didn't crash heaven just to work with some other boss man. Collective revolution puts things in order. Who takes over in the end gets blood on their hands. French, Russian, Chinese revolutions, all collectives transformed to oligarchy. These, those groups with the most connections and the will to follow up. And I wanted to help ease the pain, to put an end to war between masters. And I want to let the language mean through use. And I'm ready for whatever kind of work I can do. I can negotiate. Political authority is never more than borrowed, never more than temporary, and with luck. Zombies, environmental destructions, corruption caused by controllers of surplus. Humans on Earth are on the verge of collapse. Even in their finest hour, the four horsemen in chains, I see that they have gone too far. Maybe we can't make it work, this coalition between humans and non-humans. But maybe we can. But maybe we can. But maybe we can with freedom to be who we are. With cooperation and mutual aid, we can, with each contributing what they have and getting what they need, with each perspective having a voice, we can write heaven and earth. Epilogue, indeterminate purpose. Thank you for your kind attention. We know you've many grievances. Our scenes spoke to morality through an unlikely sequence. Power in the hands of a few and in networking all depends on skills and strategies that do the people's will. We've un we understand you've taken your seats with certain prior allegiance. You judge us based on what you think already in spite of new ideas and frequency. The things we are, are hardly fixed, but combined from their relations. You love what you love in any case, in spite of our orations. Protect what you are, no matter what. Never change your bold creations. Ethics built in different frames can replace the morals of a nation. The end.